Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in learning a little bit about the work that I do, please subscribe to my channel. As a plant propagator, I work on propagation of many different types of plants from seeds, cuttings, microcuttings, a number of different starting materials. Today what I want to talk with you is propagation from seeds and I want to talk to you about propagation of milkweed from seed. So you can use seed for propagation of some plants and get plants that are true to type to the parent. Uh, and those plants tend to be uh, inbred and the genetics indicate that it'll breed true for the subsequent generation. There are some plants that will breed true and there's some plants that won't. Hybrids, which is a mix between two parent plants, uh, those will sort out for the various genes that have been tr introduced uh, through crossing. And sometimes it's interesting to see what type of results you get when you make a hybrid if you have different colors or different uh, plant types or things like that. Um, and for an example, with uh, most of what I do, many things what I do, I work with orchids. These are seedlings of orchids. And these are about a year and a half, two years old. So these are pretty small uh, for seedlings. But uh, what we'll have is an interesting mix of um, genes that we'll see in these plants once they flower in anywhere from three to four years. Uh, some plants are true to type. These are seedlings of basil. And these plants were grown from seed. They've been uh, here almost a month. And you can see, and, and they grow true from seed, and they'll grow um, very nicely, and they get big, and they're ready to use uh, fairly, uh, fairly soon, fairly quickly. Uh, with a milkweed, what you get from milkweed is you get plants that are true to type. So you can use milkweed seeds and get plants that are very similar to the parent plant that it, that it came from. Uh, and the milkweed that I'm going to be working with today and showing you is uh, tropical milkweed. So there's some interesting um, stories that you find about tropical milkweed. Uh, first of all, it grows really nicely in the tropical environment that exists here in southwest Florida. It's not native to the area, but it still it grows very, very well here. And the reason that I grow it is, I mean, the flowers are nice. Um, they, you know, there's, there's some nice oranges and yellows and reds in the flowers, but the main reason I grow them is to attract monarch butter, butterflies and to rear the butterfly larvae on the leaves. Uh, the tropical milkweed, again, it grows well. In many cases, the plants that I grow here are just eaten up <laughs> by, by all of the larvae. Uh, that uh, that are that are actually left on the, the flowers and you can see the monarch sometimes they'll just use the plant as a nectar source they'll land at the flowers and you can see they're on the top of the flowers and they'll reach their proboscis get down and 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 use the nectar in other cases you see the monarchs hovering around the plants and they are on the bottom parts of the plants and when they curl their abdomen around they're laying eggs so the, the monarchs use this plant for a number of different reasons um, there are some interesting reports in the literature about um, you know the tropical milkweed and it may not that be that good for the monarchs and and the reality of this is is that there may be some things uh, some negative aspects, but there, in, in my opinion, there are more positive aspects by having such a nice uh, source material for the larvae to feed on. And, and I do love, uh, and the monarchs are, are beautiful. The plants are nice, monarch, monarch uh, caterpillars and butterflies uh, are, are beautiful and they're, they're fun to watch. Um, the, the larvae will grow very, very quickly uh, on the plants. They can de devour the plant and actually they can completely defoliate the plant, which is okay because the milkweed grows so quickly here. Um, so they'll, they'll, they'll grow they will um, produce just a beautiful chrysalis. And I have um, seen the chrysalis form on my orchid. So I have the uh, plants 
uh, around the yard and the, the larvae will climb up on the pergola. I've seen chrysalis on the pergola. I've seen chrysalis, uh, which is the, essentially the, the cocoon of the, uh, of the, the larvae grow on my orchid plants. Um, they start out this beautiful green color with some gold spots and as they mature they turn a little bit of a uh, more of a coloration of the wings of the of the butterfly and then they emerge uh, the butterflies will dry their wings for a period and then and then fly off and there's always in southwest Florida here you can always see uh, the butterflies around and they're really uh, they're really the very very prolific the other thing that's interesting about milkweed is the pollination in milkweed is interesting because similar to orchids, they carry pollinia. They don't have the, the pollen, what we're used to, the, the fluffy stuff. They actually have pollinia. And what happens is the animals uh, stick their feet down on the flower and the pollinia gets uh, trapped on them. And sometimes with the small insects, if they get their foot stuck in there, they have a hard time getting them out. Uh, and I've seen bees trapped. Uh, the bees also uh, are nectar seekers for the milkweed. And I've seen bees get trapped and get stuck. They usually make their way out because they're big enough, but they'll, they'll get, they can get stuck in the flowers of, of the milkweed. But the nice thing about it is that these, um, these nectar seekers are pollinators and you can generate, and most of my <laughs> milkweed generates large numbers of, of pods. And here is a, uh, here's a milkweed pod that I just harvested uh, today for my plants, but they're, they're all over the plants. And these things can be very uh, prolific. Um, these things will split open and the, uh, you know, the seeds will just scatter everywhere. The seeds of the milkweed are fairly large, but they have the, those papery parachutes that we're all familiar that we've seen. And, and they will fly all over the place. And today's a windy day here in Southwest Florida, so they might be flying to Georgia. I don't know, they can fly pretty far. Um, but you have to be careful to contain, as with many seed producing plants, you gotta be careful to maintain them so that they don't, so the seed does, doesn't just blow everywhere, especially with the, um, you know, with plants, plants like this, they can become pretty aggressive. So the, um, again, the seed that we have, it's here. I show it here just because uh, on a windy day like today, these are, these are gonna blow around um, all over the place. So you can kind of see uh, what the seed look like and I'll take them out and we'll plant these uh, in a little bit. All right, so to plant the seed, there are some, again, an, uh, other reports that you see where the seed is supposed to be cold treated. Um, in this environment, it doesn't get cold enough. The, this, these tropical milkweed don't actually don't require a, a cold treatment, and so you don't need you don't need to do that here. Um, I never do it, and the seeds are germinating just um, just fine. And the cold treatment is that it may remove some germination inhibitors. It may do something. I, I'm, I'm not really sure because it's not needed for the tropical milkweed. I, I should also mention that I'm uh, going to be trying some of the uh, native milkweed in this area, and I'll do. A, a comparison of the native versus the tropical as far as how they grow and how they attract the uh, the, uh, the the monarchs and and the larvae so I, I haven't quite set that up yet but that's in the plan so the, the way to plant these seed the seeds is very simple as with most seeds uh, first thing that you knew it need is a good potting mix and I recommend this is the miracle grow moisture um, moisture control um, potting mix and this is a really good potting mix because it doesn't get uh, too wet it doesn't get too dry and then also uh, uh, another brand is the pro mix which is a very similar type of product but it's also a, a moisture control type potting mix um, they're a little bit different as far as what's what's in the mix but I haven't really seen much difference in how the seeds grow and they do quite well it's a good mix because um, you don't get have that much problem with it again because it doesn't get over damp you don't have that pro much problem with fungus and rotting of the seedlings all right so the way to do this is put the the the, the various types of the potting mix a good quality it's important to have a good quality potting mix put the good quality potting mix in a pot shown right here and what i like to do when i plant seeds is pre-moisten the soil so i've got my my water and i will i'm pre-moistening and i already 
I already moistened it so it's, it's pretty wet um, already. So you pre-moisten the soil and then now is when I like to plant the seeds and the trick about planting seeds is not to uh, is the right depth and what you're supposed to do is, is plant the seeds um, about you know about three times thicker than the seed itself so for something like basil basil has really small seeds what I do is just I don't even stir up the top I just tap the seeds in uh, the top with something like uh, the the uh, the milkweed right here what I'm gonna do Oh, it's going everywhere. Um, so I'm, I planted, I planted a lot of seeds in here. Um, and you don't need this many. And what you can do is, is thin it out. Some of them are taken off um, also. But what I like to do with the milkweed seeds is just kind of stir them in a little bit. So I stir them in. I just mix up the soil a little bit. And I don't want to bury them uh, too deep. Um, and I've got so many seeds in here, so I'll just kind of pack the soil down around them. Some are in deep and some are not in uh, very, very deep. And then what I like to do is give them another drink of water. Alright, so we'll give them just a really light drink. And this settles the seeds uh, in place. Again, there's not much to that and, and in some cases you got to be careful about getting this too wet because the seeds will rot. Again, that's not a concern with the moisture control potting mix uh, here. So it, uh, I don't know if you can tell but the seeds actually look pretty, the, the soil actually looks pretty dry um, right now. So this is a good quality mix. All right, And then what you do is um, you, can, you can put this um, you know, don't let it dry out too much. The moisture control, the mix, doesn't let it dry out. It kind of keeps it wet. Um, but you don't let it dry out. You don't, you don't water it every day. You just, I mean, you just kind of watch it and keep it, keep it moist but not wet. And I think that's your best bet. All right, what'll happen? This, I planted this um, three weeks ago. Um, so what happened here is this this germinated uh, pretty pretty efficiently. There's a lot of seedlings in here, and what I'll probably have to do is yeah, just thin some. Of, there's so many of them, you just you got to be so here. We're thinning them out. You can keep these guys if you want. I I don't need. I have so many of these. I just don't really need to. And again, that's one of the problems as a plant propagator is you'll have more plants than you know what to do with. Um, so these are um, tropical sage seedlings that are doing well. That are about three weeks old, and um, these I'll probably let sit in here for maybe another another two to three weeks before I'll just pull the whole all the plants out of the pot and and throw them in the ground. Or if you want to. Again, um, pull out individual plants and, and plant them as well. That's, that's fine too. Uh, and in no time at all, these are going to grow pretty large and they'll be attracting um, monarch butterflies and all other types of insects too. I should mention that um, there's, there's aphids um, and other milkweed specific bugs that just love this stuff. So you, but you can't spray with, with anything because with it, with any kind of insecticide because you want the monarchs to be on there and then you want them to do well. So the recommendation is either to pick the bugs off, uh, squeeze the, 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 the bad bugs um, and, and remove them or you can spray them down with water and kind of dislodge them. But you don't, you know, don't spray these plants with any kind of insecticide if you want the monarchs, which is the main reason that I grow, that I grow these, uh, these milkweed plants. So, all right, anyway, so that I just wanted to go over with you how to propagate milkweed from seed, how just incredibly simple it is, and hopefully you'll add these uh, plants to your garden and you'll see monarchs, uh, the butterfly, the larvae, and the chrysalis, and the, the emergence of the, uh, the beautiful butterfly as well. So, thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the work that I do, please subscribe to my channel. And, to finish off, happy propagating.